I am here with Dan Starkey. How are you doing? Fine, thank you. And your Strax on Doctor Who, how long does it take to get the face on? Um, it takes three hours to get into the entire sort of prosthetic. It takes about two and a half hours to put the head on, and then it take, can take up to about half an hour to get the costume on. And so it's pretty much just the base thing and then the face. It's pretty much just two parts. Yeah, there are two sections to the prosthetic. It's basically like a big thumb-shaped piece of, um, sort of latex which goes around my head with my face popping out. And then there's a mask that's glued onto my actual face. And then quite a lot of the process is blending that in and painting it all up to make it look organic and look like a real face. Yeah. And do they use the same piece each time or is it they, new? They reuse the head part about three times or so before they've got to get rid of it. But the face, just uh, that's, that's new every day because when they take it off it gets destroyed. Yeah. And do you feel comfortable wearing it? No. <laughs> it's not. I mean, it's it's not unbearable. But no, it's not the most comfortable thing. But I've become used to it over the course of course of time. And what's your favourite Doctor Who storyline that you're you've been in? Oh gosh. Um, it's tricky because I've mean, I've loved all the episodes that I've been in. I mean, the name of the Doctor is fairly epic. I think lots of exciting things happen in that one. So I was yeah pleased with that. But the Crimson Horror is great fun as a story. I think just 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 the sort of like the combination of all the sort of Victoriana and everything is uh, is uh, very very agreeable. So um, all the now out of that and that, which is uh, a better costume that you prefer? Okay, in between the uh, the butler suit and the battle suit, the butler suit is enormously more comfortable. I'll tell you why: because the battle suit has no fly. Uh, the butler suit does, so that makes the quality of my life immeasurably higher. So it means I can drink water with impunity, whereas with the, that suit, I just have to be much more, much more careful. And uh, the trousers, these trousers take about ten minutes to get into, and they're full of talcum powder. They're horrible. So uh, you can sort of see why clothes are usually made of cloth. It makes much more sense. So uh, with the costumes, was it just the one made, or do you have like? Um a couple that were made like a stunt one and then a, all that, or was it just the one? No, there's, there's, there's one left really. I think for the very first episode we did there were about 12 or 13 or so, but I think out of all those, you know, they, they all sort of got battered and torn. I mean, because, you know, it's, it's, it's wearable, but it's, it's, it's made of rubber, so it's quite easy to tear, it's quite easy to damage. For some episodes, you know, it, you, you, when you've done something, you know, it's, uh, it, it's been specifically sort of altered or whatever. So, um, so yeah, there's, there's kind of, I think there's only that one left, more or less, or the one or two left, or, yeah. So that's it. And uh, have you, after an episode, have you got any props or costumes that they only needed for that one episode that you got to take home or anything? No, no, no of course not. It's all owned by the BBC. They would never let me walk out of the studio with a BBC prop. It's all, it's all, no, no, no. It's, it's all the, um, all the stuff, all the prosthetics are owned by a company called Millennium Effects, and they've got a warehouse full of, uh, full of stuff. They've got, weirdly enough, they've got a warehouse full of um, plaster casts of my head from when they made it, first of all. So it's very sorry. If ever I had an accident, then there will be a whole sort of like a room with my heads and my hands in, which is quite strange. Uh, but uh, but no, no, all, all of it's owned by either the BBC or the prosthetics house. So no, I don't get to keep any of it. That's a shame because um, some of the Doctor Who props are actually really cool and it would be quite cool to own them. I think the BBC know that <laughs> and they're very, very careful about making sure that people don't walk away with them. Or if they do, then they might be auctioned for charity or something specific like that. But no, otherwise it would be a, I think it would be quite a free-for-all if they let everyone walk out with their, uh, with their own props. Uh, so what other stuff have you been in that people might know you from? Well, another programme I do for the BBC is a children's programme called Wizards vs Aliens. Um, that's kind of a, there was a programme called The Sarah Jane Adventures, which was a Doctor Who spin-off for children, and I was in the very last episode of that, but um, Wizards vs Aliens is made by the same production team, and in that I play a hobgoblin. So I've got a big nose and huge ears, and uh, it's for sort of like 6 to 12 year olds, so it's a more sort of junior audience than Doctor Who, but uh, yeah, we're sort of like, the second series of that is just about to start film, is just about to start broadcasting in the UK. Um, and of that I sort of like work on the radio a lot, I work in theatre, um, yeah, and on screen as well at some point, so you'll see me. And who is your favourite Doctor? Oh, it's an invidious question. My favourite Doctor, uh, when I was little, uh, Peter Davison was kind of my Doctor, and that's when he was absolutely real and took over my imagination. But I don't know, it depends what mood I'm in. I like, I like, I like all of them, they're, they're, they're all very good. Well, thanks for the interview. Thank you very much. Pleasure.